are the risks? So risks come in all shapes and sizes. It can be an assault, it can be kidnapping, which is real common in all parts of the world, most parts of the world, not so much in the United States yet, but more than a lot of people realize. It can be a system failure, everything from being in a subway in New York City and having some type of failure, electrical failure, um, water, you know, there's, there's numerous, numerous system failures. Remember, the more sophisticated a system gets, the more catastrophic the failure when it fails. You can be an elevator that all of a sudden stops for some reason. Okay, and having a flashlight on you in the moment can keep people calm. People can be one of the biggest problems as they panic. Um, it could be a natural disaster, earthquake. We've got a huge hurricane on the East Coast right now. Um, many types of natural disasters uh, could take place to put you in jeopardy. So wide range of risks that you need to be prepared for. Where are you and your family at risk? Basically you're at risk almost everywhere. It'd be nice to kind of go through your home because there's home invasions that take place. Your car is obviously a huge risk. The single most dangerous thing you do every day is get in your automobile with other people in their automobiles. You know, if you're in a foreign country, hotels, travel back and forth. Um, any public transportation system you're on. You know, I fly a lot in airplanes. Well, airplanes are risky. Okay, subways, it, you know, you're at risk basically everywhere. Work in the parking lots at night, going out to parking lots at night, walking at night, approaching your building at night. There's all kinds of just normal day on day out places that are risks. All you have to do is check with your local police department and they'll tell you where all the assaults and all the robberies, etc., take place. And you can figure that out. Uh, when do most attacks take place? Most attacks tend to take place in compromised lighting conditions. So that might not necessarily be after dark, but very often that is after dark. But attacks take place when people are least prepared. Predators, be they animal or human, look for opportunity. So people in the wrong place at the wrong time, people not paying attention like texting. Um, people, you know, in a, in a dark, dark place at night or alone by themselves, um, those are all really opportunities for predators. Remember, they're looking for you. So uh, who, who does it happen to? It happens to everybody. It happens to you personally. We have a tendency to think it's going to happen to somebody else, and that somebody else is always a person that didn't think it was going to happen to them. So everybody's at risk from something or another, uh, at some time or another. Right? So the tendency to think it's going to happen to somebody else is denial, and that's not mature or aware. What would you do when? So if you're a woman in a parking garage with no security around, it's late at night, and you're confronted, what are you going to do? Have you prepared for that? You know, you obviously didn't prepare real well or you wouldn't be in the dark parking garage at night by yourself. Okay. But what tools do you have? Okay. So same with the guy that might be with you or a guy by himself. If you're confronted with something, it's a little late to plan. Have you made any preparation? Do you have some immediate action drills that you practice? Do you have tools on your person in order to handle the situation and find a solution? Who are you responsible for? So, I look at it, you know, I'm responsible for myself, of course. Um, I've had a lot of years of training. This has obviously been, you know, very much part of my life for decades. So, I have a lot of capabilities. But I also, I'm responsible immediately for my wife and my children. Um, I'm also responsible for those members of my society, especially women and children, that in my sphere of influence in that moment. And I take that responsibility seriously. I've had several opportunities to be the person that prevented something bad from happening um, or solving a problem when somebody else was threatened. And I usually did it with the tools that I'm carrying with me right now. If you want to be safe and well, if you have the will to do that, then you also have to gain the means to that end. So you can want to be safe and well and not do anything about it, and that's just now a coin toss, right? However, it's not difficult to prepare yourself to be safe and well. 
most people, like I say, they have insurance, they, they have money in the bank so that in case something happens, uh, they have some ability to, to manage that, that situation. They watch what they eat. They don't smoke or drink in excess. Uh, they exercise. Okay. But then they don't do anything about their personal safety uh, if something should take place. Someone enters your house at night. You know, or you're confronted in a dark parking lot. You know, there's all kinds of things that could take place. And you don't have to be a martial arts expert. The single best personal defense tool, the single best tool for being safe and well, and that doesn't even mean against another human being necessarily, is the small tactical flashlight. Okay, I carry one all of the time. I've been carrying them for 15 years plus. Okay. The flashlight does numerous things. The first one is it lights up potential areas of threat. If you're walking at night and there is a place that you cannot visually look into, we call them dark holes, you need to clear that dark hole. The only way you can clear it is eyes on. The only way you can clear it, unless you're running IR or thermal, is white light. You need to turn that light on, boom. See if there's a threat or not in that place before you walk by it. You don't wait till it gets on top of you. The difference between seeing a threat at 30 feet and seeing a threat at three feet is enormous in what options you have to solve that problem. And yeah, that's the first thing. Second thing is, you light that threat up, the chances of them clothing with you now is pretty slim. Lights like this, this is the tactical applications light from CRKT, my design, in collaboration with CRKT. 320 lumens, you cannot look into that. They're not gonna be able to look at you in the process of this. So the chances of them closing with you is already now minimized. If by chance they still push that and got close to you and you didn't have some other means to get away, whatever you do next, they can't see. Whether it's a quick kick to the groin, whether it happens to be a tool like the tactical pen design that we have from CRKT that I designed, light and a pen together is enormously powerful. They're not going to see this force multiplier strike them. It'll be very painful because it's not sharp. Okay. It's a huge deterrent. Very simple, nice, easy to use pen. Get it through security, no problem. You can use it day in, day out, so you have it with you. Remember, whatever you have at home, whatever's in your car, is of no value to you. You have to carry things all the time. It always happens when you left the thing at home. You left it in your safe. You left it in the office, you left it in your car. So always you carry. Okay? Another thing that I carry with me all the time is the hey ho folder in my civilian clothes when I'm wearing a suit jacket or something like that. Specific design for civilians. Um, it has multi multi uh, use. And it's not just personal defense. I've had the opportunity when coming on a car accident, car rolled up on its side, and person's unconscious, the only door you can get open is the driver's side, you're reaching over. I can't, I can't pull the guy out. I'm a big guy. I'm over, I'm over six feet tall and over 200 pounds. But he's completely unconscious. I can't reach over and pull him and hold him and reach and, and unhook his seat belt. But pull the knife out, you cut the seat belt, you start taking him out a piece at a time, you get the person out of the car. You're smelling gasoline. Whether it's going to catch on fire, you don't know. But it's a possibility at least if it does the situation is much more serious the hail folder by the way also makes a very nice scalpel I have my scalpel like a pen you never know when you might have to do something especially if this if you have the skill to do like a tracheostomy if somebody can't breathe and you can't figure out where that that blockage is uh, many many uses for all of these tools some of us are not as young as we used to be. You can pull this down on low setting. You can navigate paths at night. Um, if you live in cold climate, black ice is really difficult to see, but if you shine a flashlight on it, it reflects and you go, black ice, I have to be careful. People slip and bang the back of their heads and don't survive falls on black ice. Um, so what you have is a tool that solves so many problems. I mean, you're literally carrying the power of light in your hand uh, in an manner that has six options from one lumen to 320 lumens 
from a disorienting strobe to an SOS strobe. Something should take place and you were injured somewhere and nobody could get to you. Okay, you could set that strobe up, literally set it up like a candle, okay, and let it work. And these are simple tools that have enormous benefits. Again, for those of us in the prime of our life, we need a little more light to see. You can be in a restaurant with a light of ambiance, and all of a sudden it's hard to read the menu, and you can pull out your flashlight and read it. So many uses, there's just no reason not to carry something like this. You can also help other people. I had an incident in Georgia years ago when I was teaching down there. Um, I came out in a parking lot uh, from a shopping center, nighttime, about 9 o'clock at night, all the ambient lights on one side, makes a lot of dark shadows, dark holes on the opposite side of vans and trucks, and I'm getting ready to get in my car and I hear high heels. And I stop for a moment. I personally make it a habit if a woman's walking out in an area like that, I stand by my car and I wait till she gets in her car. You know, no one knows, it doesn't take much of my time, um, but it's a little bit of giving back. It's a little taking responsibility as a man for making sure people are safe. I scan the parking lot, there's a guy standing next to a van, I scan around, I scan back, he's still standing, he's not getting in. I think, I don't like that. I look back at her, click, click, she's going to walk right by the van, he's listening to the high heels. I pull out my light, I light him up, off across the parking lot. How simple was that? That's someone's wife, that's someone's mother, that's someone's sister, that's someone's daughter. It didn't have to be a martial arts expert, it didn't have to have any special skill, just a tool and the willingness to help other people. If we're going to be safe and well, we need to look after each other. If we don't look after each other, you're not gonna have a safe society. I've traveled all over the world. It's the people look out for other people in their society that make for a safe, healthy, happy society. Interact, show courtesy, show respect for people. Okay? Don't have to know them to be courteous. It values other people. Spiritual consciousness of the society rises when the fear level goes down. Be safe.